Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. We're here today to discuss voltaic cells, which are a very important topic in chemistry. Everyone should understand how a battery works. To that end, what I want to do in this podcast is to make sure you understand the main features of voltaic cells, which are sometimes called galvanic cells. You will need to understand what's happening at the anode. You need to be able to describe what's happening at the cathode, and you need to be able to describe the role of the salt bridge. So let's go on and talk first about a half cell. It takes two half cells to create a battery, to create a voltaic cell. What I mean here is I've got a metal electrode, in this case a strip of copper, immersed in a solution of its own ions. So this copper strip, you can see, is stuck into a solution of copper two ions an aqueous solution. It's got that characteristic blue color that we associate with copper ions in solution. This is a half cell. We have to have two half cells to create a voltaic cell or a galvanic cell. And they have to be arranged in a certain way so that we can take the transfer of electrons and turn it into useful electrical energy, which of course is what a voltaic cell is all about. So one of the half cells contains the anode. This is the electro the electrode that we're talking about here is called the anode. And at the anode is where oxidation occurs. Now hopefully you remember this, but oxidation is a loss of electrons. And an easy mnemonic to help you remember this goes Leo the lion says Gur. And we're just focusing on the Leo part. That means loss of electrons is oxidation. And oxidation occurs at the anode. Now there's another mnemonic to help you remember that. You can remember an ox. I've got a picture of an ox here to help you remember. All right. So you have to remember oxidation is a loss of electrons. So in this case we have some substance losing an electron to form a cation. And a lot of metals do undergo oxidation. For example, zinc can will lose two electrons to form zinc ions. Okay, well that's what's happening at the anode. The other electrode in our cell is called the cathode. And the cathode is where reduction occurs. Now if you remember our mnemonic, Leo the lion says Gur, we can use this to remember that a gain of electrons is called reduction. And the oxidation number will go down in reduction. So if you have a cation, and it gains an electron, the oxidation will, number will go down, in this case, to zero in this half reaction. Now, we can't have oxidation without reduction. We can't have an anode without a cathode. That's why we talk about half cells and half reactions. We have to put them together to talk about the entire reaction. Now, to help you remember that reduction occurs at the cathode, I have here another mnemonic, red cap. Anything that helps you remember what's happening at the anode and happening at the cathode is always good. And I know when I'm teaching these units, I'll say these topics to myself many, many times and review these mnemonics on a regular basis. Because we can keep them straight and make this unit much easier. So what I have here is a picture of a voltaic cell. All right, And the emphasis here is on the salt bridge, but I'll go through what's happening at both cases. Now in this particular case, zinc is the anode, oxidation is occurring, at the anode, here's the oxidation half reaction. I'm going from zinc metal with an oxidation number of zero to zinc ion with an oxidation number of plus two. And I've lost two electrons. What's going to happen at the anode is I'm going to take the solid zinc in that electrode and I'm going to turn it into zinc ions. So what's going to happen at the anode is that it will get less massive. I'm deliberately using the words less massive and not smaller. All right, because I'm not just talking about the size, I'm actually talking about the atoms. All right, there's less mass on the zinc anode. Now, the anode, of course, is releasing electrons. And so by convention, the anode is considered to be the negative electrode. Electrons travel from the anode through the external wire to the cathode. So 
to travel from the anode to the cathode. And that's a little fact that you really need to know. All right, and we've set them up this way so the electrons have to travel through the wire in order to complete the reaction. All right, and that's how we get usable electrical energy. All right, so the electrons travel to the cathode, which by convention is the positive electrode. What happens at the cathode, of course, we said is reduction. So here's our copper cathode. Here's the reduction half reaction. All right, so copper ions in solution get two electrons that have traveled through the wire and deposit copper atoms onto the cathode. So the cathode is going to become more massive as the cell proceeds. So we have talked about, you know, the anode and the cathode and the movement of the electrons. There's something we haven't talked about that's very important. We're generating cations in the anode compartment, and we are removing cations in the, an in the cathode compartment. So we need to maintain charge neutrality. And the way we do this is by using a salt bridge to connect the two half cells. And this gives us a complete path. Now in this particular picture, the salt bridge is a U-shaped tube containing ions that aren't going to react. All right, so we have nitrate and sodium ions, and they're in its essence acting as spectator ions. But what's going to happen is that anions will enter the anode compartment through the salt bridge to, make, to um, compensate for the additional cations being formed. And in the salt bridge also, we're going to have cations migrating through the salt bridge into the cathode compartment, again, to maintain charge neutrality. And this allows the current to continue to flow. And that's really what you need to know about the main components of a voltaic cell. I should mention that sometimes instead of a salt bridge, the U-shaped tube that I've drawn here, that I've shown here in the picture, sometimes it'll be a porous spritz so that the ions can move back and forth between the cells. So you do have to separate the two half cells in order for uh, the voltage to be measurable. And that's what I wanted to say about voltaic cells.